YouTube. I'm here today with one of my favorite videos to make. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I love talking about bad books and how much I hated them. So here I am with my worst books of 2020. One good thing to note, I did my favorite fiction and nonfiction videos and each of those had 10 books on them. This worst of list only has five. So I believe the balance works out. I read 15 more good books than I have read worst books. Um, I'm getting better at knowing what I like and don't like in reading. Another disclaimer, I read these books cover to cover. Okay, so I've read these books completely. Um, there are no DNFs included on those lists because I still haven't figured out how to work out how to keep track of DNFing books um, because I'm pretty sure some of the DNFs would be on here too. <laughs> but they're not. I can't remember what I DNFed. And there's no order. I can't. I can pick out one book worse than the other. First off, The Better Sister by Alifair Burke. And this is the messiest of dramas. So contrived. One woman marries the other woman's ex-husband and ends up raising their son while completely cutting out the original woman. But they're sisters. So one sister gets married, has a son, gets divorced, lose custody. That husband then marries the other sister. The other sister then takes on the mother role of that son and cuts out the other sister completely. Does that make sense? It kind of made sense in the book. I don't understand how it happened. I don't think it should have happened. I think it was disgusting, but here we are. Then the husband is murdered. Okay, the sister comes back. The writing is just plain bad. It is just bad. She wanted to talk about things like the Me Too movement, but she crammed it in so awkwardly and it had absolutely nothing to do with the story, you know, neither moving forward the plot or adding to the characterization and even arguably, like, contradicted the, the characterization. So, yeah, the writing was horrible. She tried to do it, she tried, but it just, it failed. The plot twists were out of nowhere. Like, there were no hints dropped whatsoever. So it was just like, out of nowhere. It's like in the middle of the book she's like, oh let's do this now. And it's just like, dude, you can't, you don't, don't do that. You have to have some lead up to it. You know, you have to drop some hints. You can't completely change the characters in the middle of your book. Don't, you can't do that. No. Bad author. Bad. <laughs> Anyways, yes. The Better Sister. Not a better book. Actually a worse book. And the sisters were pretty bad too. Number two, The Cat Who Robbed a Bank by Lillian Jackson Braun. And I kind of feel bad for pitting it on here because my Oma got it for me. She's like, oh, I got this book from the library for you. I think you'll really enjoy it. It has cats and you love cats and you love reading. So you'll like this book. And I obviously didn't. Um, this was posed as a cozy mystery with cats. And I haven't read a lot of cozy mysteries. So I don't know how they're supposed to go. But I don't think they're supposed to go like this book went. And I thought from the title that there would be a bank robbery. The cat who robbed a bank. You know, I didn't even necessarily think that the cat was going to be the robber. I mean, that, that would have been pretty cool. I would have loved that book. But there was no bank robbery. <laughs> like, why are you referencing a bank robbery in the title? And then the plot's about, like, murder. Anyways. Um, and I also thought going in that the cat would be helpful in solving the murder. And arguably it was. But the... The, the character who owned the cat was too stupid to realize it. <laughs> what I got instead was following a ridiculously rich man, which I uh, I don't like reading about rich people. I don't like rich people in general. I'm going I'm to come out there and be honest. If you're a millionaire, I don't like you. Anyways, I mean, this guy was like multi-millionaire, like close to being billionaire. Like he was ridiculously rich and he had nothing better to do with his time than to stick his nose into other people's businesses. And didn't actually do anything to solve the crime. He just kind of sat around and like heard like police talking and then like read a newspaper article. And I was just like, go out there and do something, dude. Go out there and do something. Like share information. The cat's telling you stuff and you, you're you not picking up on it. I'm picking up on it and it's not even my cat. He didn't realize there were clues until the mystery was already solved. And then he looked back and he was like, oh, hey, hold on. This cat I've had for years. He's probably done this before. And she tried so hard to make the main character seem eccentric, but he just kind of came across as incredibly boring. 
Like the only, he didn't have a job. The only thing he did was write stupid newspaper articles that seemed like they were plagiarized for the most part. Like there's nothing interesting about this dude. He had some fancy chairs. I was just like, okay. <laughs> like he liked to read and smoke cigars. That's, that's not what, that's not eccentric. He couldn't understand the cat. I understand my cat. Where's my, I don't know where my cats are. But when they meow at me and when they make noises and do things, I understand them. And maybe one day we'll solve a murder together and it'll be a better book than this. Number three, a lot of people are going to hate me for this one and I'm going to get kicked out of the literary community for saying this. Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Ogle, I gotta slow down, to Karchuk. <laughs> oh golly, I went in thinking this book would be my cup of tea. That title alone, I was like, that is awesome. First half of the book. Okay, you know, this isn't the best book in the world, but it seems to be going okay. And then just, oh boy. This was a failure of hype. I've got to learn my lesson that hyped books aren't for me. I just, I gotta learn that lesson. And I keep thinking, no, 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 this time it will be different. But it's not, it's never, it's, it's, well, sometimes it's different. But most times it's not. And it was, it was meh. That's the word I want, it, meh. The writing was meh. I was like, what's so good about this writing? I don't, don't know if it's a problem with the translator. Maybe I need to learn Polish and read this in the original language to get the writing, but you know, it's nothing special. There's nothing special about the writing. I was like, why is this winning awards for writing? Um, the mystery of the plot was actually disappointing. I, spoiler alert, actually wanted the animals to be the murderers. Why couldn't, that would have been a hundred percent better book. hundred percent better book. I would have, it wouldn't have been on my favorites list, but I would have liked that book if the animals were actually the murderers. Um, I guess there were some major character disconnect as well. Um, and normally I can ignore that. I can be like, okay, this is a fictional character. I don't have to get along with them. But this, I did not like this main character at all. And already combined with everything else, I was just like, oh, okay, I don't know why I'm reading this book. Um, you know, there's just huge parts of her character that were constantly repeated and the author would not let them go. And I hate unnecessary repetition. Like, tell me once, Bring it up maybe a few times, but don't constantly hit me over the head with this stuff. Like, I'm a reader. This is supposed to be literary fiction. Trust me to get it. You know, I don't believe in astrology. If you want to, like, do it. But that was one of the things that had a problem. That had a problem with the character. Um, but that was, and her obsession with it, I found was odd with her characterization. I felt it didn't really fit. I think it was kind of jammed in there to kind of make her seem eccentric. And the whole anti-hunting thing, which I can understand to a degree, but <laughs> it completely ignores that it is a necessity. That our way of life, our encroaching upon nature, necessitates hunting. Um, you know, we have to keep the local ecology in check. You know, just Google what deer overpopulation does to the ecology and you will suddenly be pro deer hunting. Um, yeah, like I know it's horrible to maybe go out there and kill an animal, but I mean, if you're a meat eater, if you're buying stuff at the grocery store, it's the same thing, <laughs> basically, and you're helping the environment at the same time. Um, so that completely ignores that. Um, and she's just too quirky to be believable. Um, you know, the writing was repetitive. There are questionable moments of actual xenophobia and ableism and some opinions on miscarriages and I was looking at people reading this and saying it's really good and I'm just like did you read the same book as me? Like, did you not notice all these issues in the book? Anyways yeah let's move on to another book and rent about that one instead. The Principles of Uncertainty by Myra Kalman and this was a collection of art and musings and uh, seemed to be really cool and up my, up my alley and I was really looking forward to reading it. Uh, there's no real plot or theme, it's kind of a collection of thoughts. It's like kind of reading someone's journal and I love looking through like people's art journals and stuff like that. It's one of my favorite videos to watch on YouTube um, and in real life. Like I have a collection of my own art journals that I have. Um, but this was just such a disappointment. Um, the whole thing felt really condescending. I was like, why was this even published? Like, the the people who would like this book is so niche and narrow that like 
how did it how did it make money i don't even know who myra Coleman is um you know i guess if you know her and like her for i don't even know what she does to be honest <laughs> besides these art journal type things um you might be interested in it if you run in the same social circles as her maybe but it just felt like so condescending she you know throw out references and it felt like she said at points like if you don't like this artist or this obscure musician that felt so obscure that like it it was hard to google these people i was like i did these people are only people that you know if you if you were in New York in 1982 on Fifth Avenue. I, I'm just <laughs> coming up. That's how obscure it felt. Like at this one bar, this one time, this band performed, and it was the greatest band of all time. Now, according to her, like it just she made she it was so condescending that she was like, "You're stupid and uneducated if you don't like these same things as me." And she it felt like she said that at points too. Like I got rid of the book, so I don't know if she actually did, but I think. She did at one point be like, oh, these people are uncultured because they don't know this artist that, you know, drew a stamp-sized picture once. <sighs> yeah. Um, and then she'd make fun of random people on the street as well. That was a whole, that was a whole section of the book where she'd just, she'd take pictures of people from behind and then like make fun of them in the text. And I was just like, hold up, like this is... this is overstepping some boundaries. Like I know like legally you're allowed to take pictures of people if they're out in public. But like don't publish those pictures and then make fun of them. That's just taking it to a whole other level. And like condescending to them too. And this felt like this self-indulgent vanity project. And I was just like, she's, she's probably just a rich lady and she probably paid the publisher to publish this. That was my conclusion. I don't know the actual story, but that's what it felt like. Okay, number five. And yes, you know what? I'm calling this the worst book that I read in 2020. And there were points where I was like, I can't, I have to set this book down. I can't finish reading it. I don't like it. But I did it. And um, the only reason I kept pushing through was because it was given to me by the Hillary Weston Prize. Um, and I'm so glad it didn't win. I'm so very glad it didn't win. And that's Through the Garden by Lorna Crozier. I can link my rant down below, but I will reiterate some things here too. Um, so, um, I wouldn't have picked this book up voluntarily if I saw it on the shelf. It would not appeal to me at all. It's a memoir that's marketed as two poets who have this controversial love story. It's marketed. This is what it says it's about. And their evolving relationship as Lorna husband's, as Lorna's husband deals with a mysterious illness that actually ends up with his death. Those two things were barely in the book. You think a book that advertises a relationship that starts out as adultery would actually discuss that adultery. You know, you think it would do that instead of just kind of very gently glossing over it and skipping past all of that to all of a sudden talking about her next husband and I was just like, wait, is this the same husband? I was even confusing because she didn't address the fact that she cheated on her husband and that he cheated on his wife and they ultimately ended up together. Like it was completely ignored. But it's marketed that way, so you, you expect to hear about it. Especially in a memoir that's supposed to be about self-reflection, right? You're supposed to take these moments in your life, look at them, analyze them, and talk about them, you know? But it was completely, as I said, glossed over. And this was another case of a fundamental difference between the character, in this case a real person, but somehow makes it worse than a fictional person because I can say that person's not real, it's okay if we don't get along, but this is a real life person. And it disappoints me that people like this are alive and famous and making money off of their horribleness. And I'll talk about how she's horrible. Not just for the cheating, that happens. That doesn't automatically make you a really, really bad person. It, it's not a good thing, but like, the questionable worse things she does worse things um so between her and myself you know and this isn't always an issue but you know knowing that she was a hard person that she was a real person and not seeing anything redeeming in her really made it a lot worse so first of all she bragged about how her evil stare which was originally directed at her husband's ex-girlfriend who was not doing anything towards her husband he wasn't flirting with her wasn't trying to get him back she just didn't like this girl because she used to go out with her husband and she killed a bunch of fish in the aquarium behind that lady with her evil glare and she's bragging about it like talking about it like it's funny and that you know i'm just like lady you're you shot hate lasers out of your eyes and killed fish and you wished it was a person <laughs> you hate someone that much who's done nothing to you? Okay, whatever. Not that bad. 
the thing that really set me off. And if you've done this, unsubscribe from a channel. I don't want to ever see you or hear from you again. <sighs> she seriously considered returning a cat to the SPCA because it didn't like her right away. And I'm trying not to get too upset about this right now. Which would normally make me sit, not even just set the book down, it would make me chuck it across the room and DNF it. But I thought, I gotta finish reading this for the prize. Maybe something happens. She ended up keeping the cat, but she seriously considered returning a cat to the SBCA because it didn't like her. It liked her husband better and she was all snitty and snooty about it. And I was like, my cat was from the SPCA and my cat was returned by the first family that got him because he was hiding for two weeks. And I was just like, even if I never see this cat, even if I have to like pit the litter box under the bed and pit the food under the bed and the cat never comes out from under the bed, I'm not going to return this cat that was abused, that was, you know, he, he was rescued from a, a fair, um, a cat hoarder, you know, like, I'd, I'd never do that to an innocent animal, like, and who cares if a cat doesn't like you? Cats don't like anybody. Do you not know what cats are like? And this is t subtitled a memoir of love and cats and stuff like that. And I was just like, how can you call yourself a cat lover and want to return a cat because it doesn't like you? <laughs> just... Okay, I gotta calm down. I gotta calm down and not yell about cats. It was basically a memoir with no self-awareness, no self-reflection, no looking back and saying, maybe that wasn't such a good thing. Maybe you should have a bit of moral judgment against yourself there. Like, maybe you shouldn't be bragging about hate lasers shooting out of your eyes and killing fish and hoping that it killed a woman instead. There's more to it. There's things about poetry and stuff that I didn't agree with, and I'll leave my review down below. But those are the worst books. I'm all worked up. I have to go to bed and like, 30 minutes and now I've all, I'm all worked up about these books. Why do bad books exist? Answer that question in the comments. What was the worst book you've read this year? And thank you for watching.